Okay, so we talked about a number of the recommendations. I just wanted to kind of show you that we actually have several tables of recommendations. Uh, we didn't have an opportunity to discuss all of them. Uh, when the paper comes out, you'll be able to see them all. Um, and I can just preview a few of them here for you, but we talked about the preoperative evaluation, the use of a dedicated uh, score, and that is our recommendation 1.1. Um, we also have recommendations for the case setup. Again, you've seen some of these in today's discussion. A number of um, recommendations in concerning interoperative ventilation, and all of these actually were 100% consensus statements, uh, not always the case for all of the statements that we discussed during our uh, get-together. The recommendations concerning respiratory system monitoring and ventilation management, again, all reached that 70% uh, consensus that we were seeking to make it a, uh, a true consensus statement. And uh, just again, I'm sorry, I'm going to run through these kind of quickly, but table five is the recommendations concerning recruitment maneuvers. Um, there was some controversy concerning this. Um, 5.1 did not meet the consensus level of 70%, and 5.5 just barely squeaked by. So there's still a lot of, uh, I think, discussion and, and uh, studies concerning recruitment maneuvers, which sounded like it is a, uh, a topic of some discussion here today as well. And finally, uh, what to do during emergence, and that was actually covered pretty completely. We covered most of these topics during the emergence section of the, uh, of the discussion. Um, so just a few brief words on the future of lung protective ventilation. Um, of course, additional re um, clinical trials are going to be needed to identify the role, particularly the role of the individual components. Many of these studies have been sort of packages, packages of uh, combined PEEP and TATAVIM and recruitment maneuvers. And so trying to tease out the uh, different components is going to be one of the things I think we want to try to do in the future. So the role of PEEP, TATAVIM, recruitment maneuvers, FiO2, um, all of which were discussed today, I think will continue to be elucidated in future studies. We also need studies to investigate uh, patient and procedure specific, as we were getting the question earlier about uh, what happens when you're doing lapar laparoscopic surgery, what happens when they're in steep Trendelenburg. And I think that these are going to be very good questions to answer on an individual basis and really a, a, an example of the future of medicine moving towards individualized approaches or precision medicine. And I think that is cer certainly where lung protective ventilation should be going. Um, better measurement of uh, ventilator variables and their correlation with outcomes is going to be important as well. We get a lot of data from the ventilator and we're getting better at looking at our outcomes and putting them into big databases. Combining those with artificial intelligence and making recommendations based on those sorts of uh, observations and those sorts of uh, machine learning types of things to uh, provide predictive algorithms is also going to be important. And then incorporating known protective strategies into everyday practice, uh, perhaps by automating some of these components, uh, certainly recruitment maneuvers, PEEP trials can be done um, today, and some of these other things, again, when, particularly when we're talking about individualized uh, approach, these may be uh, useful uh, ways to move into the future. And finally, reducing the significant morbidity and mortality related to mechanical ventilation in the OR. Essentially, when we do lung protective ventilation well, we're improving outcomes and improving the, uh, the, the experience for patients in many ways. So, if anybody's still interested in voting, we'll have one last vote. Um, do you plan to change how you practice lung protective ventilation after today's talk? And uh, I don't know if we can get the... Do we have that one? Oh, there we are. Okay, it didn't come up on the screen. So it's yes, no, or not sure. Well, that's excellent. Makes us all feel very warm inside that uh, maybe we've <laughs> helped you think about this a little bit. Um, I want to thank all the panelists who participated today. Um, it was an excellent session. I also want to thank GE Healthcare for their sponsorship of this session and the audience uh, for their participation in voting today. Thank you all very much. Also to Euro Anesthesia 2019. Thank you for inviting us to be here today.